This is Luna, and this is Goldie. Oh, we're buddies now, huh? When I have the treats. And this is their roadmap to success. Come. Now, these treats uh, work really well because they have no preservatives, so make sure you fold it over and burp all of the air out of them. These are Tricky Trainer ch Soft and Chewy Chicken Flavor Treat, Chicken Flavor Treats. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, as you can tell, they're very interested in them. They don't have any preservatives, so if you leave the bag open, they'll be hard as an M&M in about a half an hour. But these are treats to use for your focus exercise, as well as the uh, video above that we talked about, about people coming to your office, and not for other things. So we want to reserve these. These are like your filet mignon. Sit. <laughs> Sit. Sounds like somebody said Luna outside. Um, I think I'm just hearing things. Come. See. See more. Okay. Oh. All right. Now, one of the things we could we didn't go over is something I call uh, counter conditioning. So you said that there are sounds outside that she reacts to. So one of the things we could do is we would need to have somebody else out there. And I didn't go over this during a session, so I'm going to go through it now, and then we'll go to summarizing things. So what I do is I take one of these treats when they're soft. <laughs> and not slobbered on, you can squish them into like a pancake. Then what I do is I let the dog nibble on it in three or four bites. And as you can see, I can change which direction the dog looks just by moving the treat. So the idea is for counter conditioning to provide the, the subject, in this case the dog, with a reinforcer, in this case the chicken liver treats, before the stimulus happens. Now a loud knock is probably going to cause them to freak out where they heard it but they didn't bark. So the idea is we want to be delivering the treat at far enough distance so the dog doesn't perceive it to be a threat. And so what you might want to do is do this on the phone and have somebody, one of you outside, maybe you go run some errands as you're coming back, you text or call each other, hey, let's do the counter conditioning thing. So you walk up the steps, and if walking up the steps triggers the response, then you say, okay, I'm going to do the steps. And you say, okay, go. And you let the dog start chewing on it, and then you start stomping on the steps as you come up. Now, when the treat is about to be gone, we have to tell the person, and the other person has to stop because we only want the stimu or the stimulation happening while the dog is having the reinforcer delivered. I had a dog named Munchie that's actually a corgi that lives in uh, Westwood and that, bar that will try to bite anyone who opens Velcro, hates the sound of Velcro. And also was reactive to people in the apartment complex that would walk by. They used this technique and the dog would bark like crazy and rush the door. After doing this technique, they would gradually, each time they got a little bit closer to the door or the person outside stomped a little bit louder or knocked or rang the doorbell, eventually no sounds outside the apartment were reacted to. Now some of us like our dogs to bark if somebody's at the door doing like things like that, so you guys might not want to do that, but in apartment living sometimes we get in trouble for having a dog that's barking too much. So um, if you have questions about this and you need something you want to do, make sure you message me. I have a bunch of videos where I can share. I can share Munchie's video with you. You can show, see exactly how to do it. Okay, um, so these dogs were basically what I call my perfect storm. They really didn't have any rules. They were getting some exercise, but probably could use a little bit more exercise. But they were also able to tell the humans what to do, and the humans allowed them to do certain things or did certain things with them that got them impression, gave them the impression that they were in charge. Um, a couple examples. Uh, for dogs, whoever is uh, sits in the highest spot has more rank or authority. Dogs like sitting up here. Um, also, in the dog world, only dogs that are the leaders get free attention. Well, these dogs get petted for no purpose or whenever they demand attention. And that's, I consider petting a dog our way of paying the dogs, which is why I want to petting with a purpose, which is basically if the dog nudges me, scratches me, barks at me, whatever it is, I give it a counter order. Only when it complies does, do I pet it. So if, I, if the dog nudges me and I say sit once, it doesn't sit, then I lean back, pull up my phone, play words with friends or whatever it is, and ignore the dog. If it whines, whimpers, don't say a word. And then you can wait a couple minutes, whenever, next, wait for the dog to go away. When it comes back, then you, again, tell it to sit. And uh, this is if the dog is initiating contact with you. Now, you can also use passive training. Come. I know you're not, there we go, come. I know you're not a big fan. Here, how about if I go like this? Come. Oh yes, the motivator. Even though I faked you out, but it allowed her to come closer, then I'm able to pet her. So pet, petting with a purpose is basically when the dog tells me what to do, nothing happens anymore. I tell the dog to do something instead, and when the dog does it, I reward the dog. And I say just the command word, just sit, just come, just whatever it is. If she's already sitting here when she scratches at me, I might come and make her sit over here or make her lie down, whatever it is. So the dog learns, I can't tell the human what to do anymore, I have to ask the human for something, and not only do I have to ask for it, I have to pay for it through some obedience. After a while, the dog will start coming and sitting in front of the human and prepaying by sitting or offering a desired behavior. And then we want to pet the dog when it does that as much as we can because now we're rewarding the dog for doing something desirable rather than versus something annoying. Remember, good attention from a human and bad attention from a human is pretty much the same thing. It's validating to get the human's attention and 
most of us train our dogs to misbehave because that's when it gets our attention. That leads me to something I call passive training, which is what I just did there. When the dog offers a behavior on its own that is unsolicited, that is something that we want, we want to pet the dog within three seconds and then say the command word. So if the dog comes over to me on its own, I'm going to pet it and say come. If it comes and sits down, I pet it and say sit. If it lays down, I pet it and say crash. Um, we can also do this with feeding the dogs. So when we're feeding the dogs, we talked about this off camera, we have two bowls. We're not going to allow the dogs to be maybe move the bowls into the kitchen. And then we don't allow the dogs in the kitchen. Whoever's feeding is going to eat something first, five or more bites of a chip or cracker or whatever it is. And then we're going to invite one of the dogs in first. I would invite whoever is behaving better. When that dog comes in, I give it permission to eat. When it takes its first bite, I would say grub, chow, feast, whatever the word is. So when Goldie is, yeah, it takes that first bite, she hears the word chow, or let's say. When, uh, uh, when Luna comes, uh, Luna hears the word, there's no food in her mouth. So it doesn't mean anything to her. Then when, when uh, Goldie's done, Goldie has to leave the kitchen area. Then we invite Luna in. When Luna takes her first bite, we say maybe feast. And so after a month or two, and normally there's sounds outside the door, normally this would cause them to re be reactive. Uh, Goldie is interested in a treat dispensing toy, and Luna, I think, is just tired. And she's sitting next to her garden, so she's content. Um, okay, but it's a, it's a good illustration of how quickly dogs change and modify their behavior. I love she's already nudging that thing around, isn't she? Um, and she's got it almost under the table and she's pulling it back out. Smart, she's not a dumb dog. Um, okay, heading with a purpose and passive training, the two easiest things we can do if we get in the habit of doing it. We won't realize how often we're petting without a purpose. So we're gonna use the watchword paycheck. So if someone comes in the room and sees I'm petting the dog at Sandy, and they say paycheck, I stop petting, I don't argue, and I tell the dog to sit, when it sits, I pet her on the chin, I say sit, and then I say, I asked him to sit before he came in, you didn't see her, she stood up, and I continued petting, and David said it's loud, which it is. Um, and I also say reward or recognize. I like fun command words. Sometimes I have one client that say testify. And so you testify, that means that the dog just did something that you missed. So you look at the dog and whatever the dog happens to be doing. Standing there, you just pet it and say, I assume you just came. Little guy here, uh, nutcracker. Um, but uh, if the dog is sitting, I pet it and say sit. If it lays down, I'm petting and saying crash or chill or whatever the word is. If it brings you a toy, maybe you call this nutcracker. Maybe you call this one, you know, pinky or salmon whatever it is, um, come. Now she's a little bit off put of, of people that she doesn't know, which is why she backed up because I think a lot of people reach over to pet her without permission, which is why for both dogs, I would recommend getting a yellow bow and we're out walking and tie a big yellow bow on a ribbon halfway up and down the leash. People will come and ask what it is and it gives you an opportunity to say, my dog's a little skittish about people that doesn't know who reach out to pet them. And, and so, uh, and they're like, oh, well, what can I do? Actually, if you could toss this treat for her, that would be great. Or ask her to sit. So you're more interested in this than barking at the dog out there. And you saw that sound of the bag crinkling was very strong attracted. So when these are gone, keep the bag. Keep one in with, you know, with every time you go out walking, you can use this to redirect the dog's attention. Now, uh, for that, we all went over a couple things about walking. Now there's a video, there's a write-up right below this with a dog named Hiccup, all one word. So you can search on the I think it's on this side of the website when you're looking at it, there's a search box. If you're looking at this on doggoneproblems.com, type in hiccup and look for the uh, video where I have all these tips about walking. Um, make sure you practice a U-turn as I described in the video. Make sure you practice um, the leash uh, using the martingale collar. Again, going down the steps. Every couple steps we're going to stop short and make the dog stay with us. Um, let me see. Um, we can also use, um, yes, you're doing a good job. Um, let me see. So we could also use um, uh, the focus exercise when our dogs get out of tr in trouble. Now, I don't remember where, but I have hundreds of fix uh, videos for that. The Guardians were both doing that, I think, pretty well. So what I'd like the Guardians to do, sit. That's passive training. Come. That's pa Well, that's passive training, except for she's like, I'm not worried about you touching me. Okay, so when we are walking, make sure if your dog starts showing you signs that it's uncomfortable, come. Uh, that that we don't continue walking them towards it. So, and again, just if you have a guest that comes over and reaches and she recoils, have the guest stop and leave their hand here. Don't try to pet. Um, we want to show the dog I'm a good person, but the dog's saying, I'm not comfortable with you being this close. And if we recognize and listen to the dog, that will help her gain confidence. So when we're out on a walk, what we could do, I see you're licking your lips. There we go. Licking the lips is a sign of stress. So if you're walking down the street and you see your dog staring at another dog or your dog starts moving slowly 
or the ears go way back or go forward. The tail, sorry, uh, goes up or the hackles go up. They uh, turn their head to the side and yawn. Um, they freeze, they start breathing really heavily. Um, these are all sign warning signs are given to the other dog. If we don't recognize those and we keep on walking the dog towards another human or dog or whatever they're reactive to, we're teaching the dog, we're not paying attention, you're on your own. And that's why dogs learn to lunge and bark and bite because the humans are not listening and the dog thinks that it has to take care of it on its own. So um, uh, the video that we have above uh, has some tips and tricks that will help with uh, people coming into our apartment. But again, the more that we enforce rules and boundaries and pet with a purpose and passive training, the more the dogs are gonna see, gravitate towards the follower's mindset and be uh, more see their humans as taking things, come, uh, as having things under control. Uh, let me see, now we also went over a number of rules. This is a breaking one of the rules, but we haven't started it yet. One of the rules is not being allowed in the furniture for at least 30 days, and that's the minimum, at or as long as the problem is still going on. And then after that, the dog allowed on the furniture only with good, uh, only with invitation, and only for good behavior. So if I invite her up and she starts barking at sound outside, she has to get down. Or if I invite her up and she gets, you know, she wants to get down to get a drink of water and she comes back, she needs another invitation. Now if the dog gets on the furniture, we don't want to use a lot of punishment. So if I want the dog to get off, what I would do is do that. Off. Now she got rooked, that's okay. So we practice maybe with them one at a time so the dog does get the reward. But remember, anytime the treat goes in the mouth, then you hear the command word after. So I touch the nose with the treat, I toss it on the ground, all right, so let's see if you can rook her. Oh, I went under the table, now they're both SOL. But we throw it on the ground, and then when they lick it up, we say the word off. And then at that point, now I'm gonna guard. So if the dog tried to get up, I would flash my hand and block them, or I put boxes or something up here that's blocking the dog from getting up here. Um, there's some other tricks, and if you have problems with keeping them off the furniture, let me know and I can show you a couple other tricks and things that you can do, especially when we leave. Um, now getting more exercise will probably be helpful, so I would recommend that we guardians start the exercise journal that I talked about off camera. Off, see how fast she was ready to get off? Now, if you don't have a treat, you know, and after a while you tell the dog to get off and it does, you can reach, just reach over and pet the dog and say the word off. Um, now for, um, uh, what's my train of thought? What was I saying right before that? It will come back to me. Always tell yourself you'll remember it a minute and then your brain will keep on looking for it. Um, so, um, okay, so, oh, rules. And so basically, uh, if the dog, um, if we want to teach the dog to get off, have the other dog gone, put it on the floor, when the dog gets down, we pet it and reward it. Now, we also might want to teach the dog to leave rooms. So we go to the kitchen, because when the, one of the rules is dogs are not to be in the kitchen when we're eating food. Well, we help them practice and learn that behavior first by going to the kitchen, touching the nose of the treat, and throwing it three feet out, out of the kitchen. When the dog goes out, we say the word out this time. Do that with every room in the house. I usually do it with two treats at each place. And because one of the rules is dogs not to be on the cart, allowed to be on the black carpet when the humans are eating at the table here, we should toss a treat over there. And do it with the dogs separately at first, but eventually with both dogs. And eventually say out, and they'll both leave the room if we practice it enough. Uh, now, uh, we also talked about coffees for closers. Remember to Google that scene, or YouTube that scene, and you'll see young Alec Baldwin in his heyday. But basically, coffee for closers means that I'm going to say, I'm going to offer one reward to the dog who does what I want first. So that doesn't really count because you heard me crinkling the bag. So we're going to wait for you to lose interest and I'll demonstrate that. Uh, let me see. Uh, some of the other things we want the humans to eat something first before we feed the dogs. Off. See, she doesn't know that yet. So if I go like that. Off. I'm still making the crinkly sound. All right, so let's do it this way. Come. I expect the sit. Come. So if you just reward just the dog that gives you the what you want and you ask them to come or sit or whatever it is, one dog sits right away. If I rewarded her and gave her the same reward, she has no motivation to listen. But after a while, she'll start noticing, man, why does uh, Goldie keep on getting the treats that I don't get? And then she starts giving off, off the same performance. That was interesting. Um, <laughs> and so I won't describe what was going on off camera. But basically, um, now we provide the dogs motivation to want to come. Uh, now, uh, Goldie, uh, both dogs don't like, um, uh, well, uh, Luna, excuse me, not you. Um, Luna doesn't like having her harness put on. Now, we uh, gave them martingale collars. I would suggest we probably leave the martingales attached to the leashes like we do for our harness. 
Now, if she develops a sti uh, negative stimulus for that, we can use that conditioned emotional response I talked to you about a little bit off camera. Are we okay? Um, and then basically, uh, so what I do is I, I flash the thing. When she looks at it, I drop a treat. And just flash, drop a treat, do that at, five or six times. And then eventually I hold it out and she's got to come lean towards it just like that. And then I would drop the treat. Next thing I would do is would be to hold the collar like this with the treat here. And the dog sticks his nose in a little bit and it gets a treat. And then eventually the dog has to stick its nose in further, further, further. And eventually it puts it all the way around and the dog puts it on in its, uh, the collar on itself rather than us forcing the dog. Um, let me see, what else? Um, other rules that we went over, the dog has to sit at the door before we let it go in or out. It's got to not race ahead of the humans uh, down the steps. And again, the humans might want to put tape around the door and help the dog practice staying outside the boundary when there's somebody outside knocking at the door. This, this should be one of the roommates. Come. Oh. Um, I'm using a treat for that. Normally I would just pet for that, but these dogs are not big fans of males. And I, although I've, I've built up a lot of trust with them, uh, she's, if I reach forward, you see, well, you see we have a little bit of a move back. So remember, anytime your dogs are stiff or moving away or showing the signs that I talked about a little bit earlier in this video, make sure the pe person is not interacting with them. The more that they meet men that don't touch them and don't have a negative interaction, the better uh, practice they are and the more comfortable they're going to be with that. I shouldn't have hissed twice. That's the first escalating consequence. Remember to use the escalating consequences to disagree with unwanted actions and behaviors. If you forget the what they are, make sure you message me. Come. Always remember to pet under the chin, not on top of the head. If the dog is standing in your way, do not walk around the dog, walk through the dog. The dogs need to learn my job as a human, or as a dog, is to default, defer to the leaders. Um, let me see, the humans need to make sure they eat something before they feed the dogs as well. Um, let me see, I'm probably forgetting, oh, uh, for uh, Goldie, for, um, yes, hey, um, she's, doesn't, she's not a big fan of kids. I think I talked about in the video, practicing and recreating situations. Whenever possible, we want to do that with kids that we know the parents or know the kids so that the kids will listen to us and we have more control over it. In the meantime, avoid taking her any place where there are kids because that's going to help her practice the behaviors that we don't want. Uh, is there anything else we went over that I forgot to go over in this video? I'm probably a whole lot. We covered a lot in three hours. The focus exercise. Make sure you practice the focus mm -hmm. exercise. So I want the guardians to practice the focus exercise each one twice a day with their dogs at different times of the day and not next to each other. And then I'd also like each the guardian to practice once a day with the, that's demand barking. I'm definitely not going to respond to that. Um, but I want the guardians to swap dogs and practice the focus exercise at least once a day with the other dog. Now remember, at first it's one second, one second. But eventually, one second, two seconds. And we're gonna go by one second in increments, eventually we can go one second, 20 seconds. Yes, you have to come closer for that. Come. Come. Now Luna wasn't comfortable or confident enough to come and get it, but if she sees that Goldie keeps on getting it, jealousy is a great motivator. And eventually she learns, well, the human's not trying to pet me or do anything bad, I feel good about the human. And the more that happens, the more inclined she'll be to do that. Now, one thing I didn't go over with humans uh, is I'm going to talk about now is basically teaching the dogs new skills to help boost their self-esteem. Just like humans, when we graduate the bar or college or whatever it is, we feel better about ourselves because we accomplished something. So one of the things you might want to do is actually start teaching the dogs a new command. So maybe Sunday, both, maybe you take turns, and one of you is going to teach both dogs. And then all week long, we teach, bang your dead. And all week long, we practice that with the dogs. And by the end of the week, they've got it down cold. The next week, the other roommate takes over. And she teaches the dog a different command. Some of the commands I like are dog commands that require the dog to develop self-control, like balancing a treat on its nose, the stay command, um, and different things along those lines. Um, one thing I just it just occurred to me that I forgot that I told the guardian, she needs a way to help uh, exercise Goldie. And Goldie being a herding breed, she needs more rules and structure. So. Um, Look for other rules and, and delayed gratification to incorporate. But one thing we can do for her is scent games are very draining for dogs. Come. Now you can just Google scent games. There's a whole bunch of you can get books on them. But a dog's nose controls 60% of their brain. And the other day, it's tax season. I sat down and spent about six or seven hours doing my taxes. I'm pretty active. I run, I work out at least once a day. Um, I'm you know with dogs, I'm on the go. I sat down at a desk for six hours. When I got done, I was exhausted. I was wiped out. I used a muscle I don't use as often, this muscle. If your dogs actually practice things that are mentally challenging, that will help drain them 
almost sometimes more than physical exercise. Now, one other thing we could do for her is get her a doggy backpack. It sounds funny, but it looks like a horse uh, saddlebag. It goes across, it's like a harness, and you could actually put a little bottle of water. My apprentice Sam actually has one. She works with a lot of big dogs, and we have little, uh, uh, I think, five ounce bags of sand. And she keeps on loading those up. Now the dog is doing something by carrying something. Now they're actually working, and it makes the workout more efficient, like people who wear weights or do things along those lines. So that might make the walk a lot more, uh, a lot more productive. And that'd be something good for you. Now the other thing we might want to do is look into herding uh, play for her. I mean, there are have farms and places where you can actually teach your dog to herd and take your dog and let it go running around chasing sheep or whatever it is, and you'll feel very good and exhausted. Uh, make sure for the exercise journal, we kind of play with those values. Right now, probably walking is gonna be the best thing for them, but if we see dogs and the dogs reactive, remember the best thing we can do is practice that U-turn walk around a, sh a car or a tree or something, and then practice the focus exercise a couple times, and then let the, uh, let the dog pass, and then go back to walking. Now, I wanted to uh, expand on the focus a little bit. At first, it's one second, one second. Eventually, you're gonna be one second, 20 seconds in the house, in different parts of your house. We have a balcony. The next step should be practicing it outside on the balcony, not when any other dogs are barking. But now we have the outside sights and sounds and smells, and there's distractions there. The next step would be to practice it right outside the door on the landing here. We're in the apartment complex, so we're not going to have riffraff and people around. And again, when no people are there. Now, when you do it outside here or there, or actually eventually on the street, we're going to go back to one second, one second, even though they know up one second, 20 seconds inside. But we can move faster this time. And eventually, when it gets to the point where we're, when we're walking and there's nobody around, we just say focus. The dog looks up at us. We hold the treat to our nose and go pop it in the mouth and say focus. Take about five steps, do it again. We want to practice that behavior over and over when there's no reason to use it, so that when we need to use it, the dog thinks it's just another drill. And this way, we redirect the dog's attention away from you. Now, when you're walking and doing that, don't stop. That's what most people do. They stop and then they give the dog a treat. Well, then that is going to put you at a, at a kind of a, a disadvantage. So the idea is eventually you want to be able to go one second, 20 seconds, while the dog is like running into things, is looking up at you and not paying attention to the other dogs that are around. Uh, isn't that right? Yes. Uh, when you're teaching tricks, don't teach the shake. These dogs already put their paws on us, and when a dog puts his paw on you, especially when you come in through the door, that's their way of claiming you as their property or letting you know you're in charge or you belong to them. Um, so uh, if they jump up like that, I have another video, a technique that I like to use, I have actually a lot of videos of this, showing you how to teach your dog to stop jumping. So if that continues happening at the door, uh, please let me know, and I can share that video if I haven't already linked it above in this write-up. Um, what do you think, Goldie? I love those ears. They rotate. They really tell me what's going on with you. Yes, I see you. I'm not sure. I'm not always doing. I'm now I'm confident, and now I'm more confident. Yes, you're doing a great job. Um, the martingale collars, if the dogs play with each other, sometimes if they're too big, the dog can get its paw caught in that small, other small loop. So make sure you, I would probably just leave them as a harness type collar only. Remember to wrap the leash around their chest. It goes in, in front of both legs. A lot of people do go around one leg and then up here. So it should go around all the way around the chest. And then the small loop is on the spine. Always run it towards the dog's head, never towards the dog's butt. It'll kind of cinch up and you want to have good action. So when you release the leash, it is easy. Now the video again for hiccup will show, that shows you all these walking tips and tricks that will help. Okay, what do you say, Goldie? Luna, can we come over here and get you on camera for the wrap up? That's not what I wanted. I actually wanted Luna to come over for that, but she's not gonna go over, so we're gonna wrap it up with you. Sit, sit. This is Goldie, Luna is being shy off camera, and this is their roadmap to success. Oh, she's gonna come. So you see that skittishness right there with that kiss. Come. And I like to pet them under the chin. You guys can do that. They won't be able to do that. And remember, if you're asking them to come, the lower you go, the more Jesus. appealing it is. For it's okay, sweetheart. I think that was cross contamination. You heard a sound outside right at the same time I was lowering my hand. Because the lowering the hand, the lower you go, the more it's for the dog. See, I came to it right there. Are you disagreeing? She's jealous. She might be jealous. Come. Come. I still think because she looks over there, I think she heard something. But if that's the case, so. Off. All right, well, this is Luna, and uh, this is Goldie, and this is their roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you do it.